go back because you mentioned something about this being a proxy uh, fight over net neutrality, and, and, and it, really, it really isn't that. Um, but we did go back. We restored the, in 2017, um, those rules were reversed. Six years since then, broadband access has expanded and reached more rural areas, internet speeds have increased, there's more competition, creating more value to consumers here in the United States. And even in the UK, which imposed heavy-handed net neutrality regulations in 2016, they've moved to lessen its net neutrality regulations after seeing a decrease in broadband investment <coughs> and not being able to meet consumers' demands through the course of the pandemic. So you said, and, and, and I mean, your support for that is, is very clear. But the reason I don't think this is a, um, it's not a proxy between, on net neutrality, your nomination. I think what perhaps it is a proxy on is the partisanship with which you approach not only that issue, but every other issue. There was an attempt here on this committee to try and come up with a bipartisan agreement to deal with the issue of blocking, throttling, paid prioritization, all those sorts of things. And then the FCC under Chairman Wheeler, who was a very partisan FCC chairman, probably the most partisan in history, um, decided to go their own way. And so my question, I guess, having to do with that subject, because I want to get to one other issue that you mentioned, but let's just say, for example, that Congress were to decide, um, you know, to do something on this issue of blocking, for example. Or, for example, uh, Do you believe that the FCC should com come to Congress for more direction before attempting any iteration of net neutrality rules to prevent the back and forth between administrations, which is what we will see when administrations flip and the FCC changes majorities. You're going to get this back and forth, which creates no stability, no predictability, and, and completely undermines the conditions for investment if you want to continue to see the technology expand and grow. So I guess the question is, do you think that the FCC ought to come to Congress before you do something like that? Yes or no? As Senator, uh, I think I said this in both my hearings, prior hearings, I would love for Congress to give the FCC proper authority and specific authority to adopt net neutrality rules. Now, net neutrality has been repealed now for, well we've, well, we've been debating net neutrality for over 20 years, and Congress has not done so. And net neutrality was repealed in authority. That's the most important thing I want, to, I want to make clear, is that to me, the issue is not about blocking and throttling and paid prioritization. It's about whether an agency, which was created in 1934 to oversee communications networks, should be able, should have the power to oversee the most powerful communications network of our time. Congress has had many, two decades now, to decide that authority, and it's refused to do so. However, I still believe Congress should do so, and I beg Congress to do so. But until then, until it does so, the agency so has got to have authority. So if we came up with something authority. up here that, for example, legislation that would prevent blocking, but only blocking, would you support that, yes or no? As a partial solution, yes, but not as the entire solution. All right, let's shift to the, um, as you'll likely recall, as part of a request I made to the FCC when serving as chairman of this committee, you were named you mentioned this as being a source for a leak of confidential information that ultimately turned what could have been a bipartisan decision to adopt a cap for the Lifeline program into a partisan vote that left the program uncapped at the time. Um, you recall this particular investigation. You said Absolutely. you did, yes or no. So is it correct that you did leak um, certain information about the FCC's Lifeline order to the press at the direction of then Chairman Wheeler, yes or no? It was not a leak. I, I will admit that I called Politico and told them uh, that there was a deal, although I did not uh, reveal the amount of the cap, because Chairman Wheeler authorized me. And when he authorized me, as the IG says on the final page, that turned non-public information into public information. So at that point, it was no longer a leak. Well, the, on the IG report, the point isn't that it was illegal, but that it was blown, it blew up a bipartisan deal. So. I want to come back to my original premise, and that is your activities at the FCC previous, uh, everything that you've advocated since, uh, including activity in political campaigns, which has already been alluded to, suggests that you would be a very partisan influence on a commission that
that in my view deals with issues where you need to try and find some consensus. What happened with the IG report, and I've got a copy of the IG report here, is that a deal which was in the you know, throes of being made between the, um, all five commissioners, Republicans and Democrats, uh, was scuttled. I mean, it was tanked, it was torpedoed by going public and, and, and trying to undermine that deal. That to me is I think the essence of what the IG report suggests and I think it does get at the very heart of your qualifications as, as an FCC commissioner. Yeah. And I know I'm out of time, so I would just add one final point. And I said this before at a hearing last year, and that is the, the issues, there was a, uh, an op-ed uh, that Heidi Ham, Heidkamp, former senator, uh, Democrat senator from North Dakota, submitted while your nomination was under consideration previously, in which she says someone is wrong for the FCC and rural America based on your comments critical comments okay. uh, about uh, delivery of broadband in rural areas. Well, I'm going to let Ms. Son respond to that. Thank you, quickly. And then we're going to Senator Clutcher. Yeah. So uh, just two things really quickly. Chairman Wheeler, and it's in the IG report, would have gone along with that vote. The only reason that I was asked to call Politico was because the meeting kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed, and we were just being inundated with calls, OK? So Wheeler actually would have done anything that's, that Commissioner Clyburn would have asked to do. So that's number one. Number two on the height camp point. I'm supported by, as you saw, Chad Roop, former RUS administrator for the Trump administration, Hilda Gay Legg, former RUS administrator for the Bush administration, and TCA, the Rural Broadband Association, WTA, broadband, Rural Broadband Advocates, and the Rural Wireless Association. And that's because I believe they need better broadband and I'm absolutely a huge supporter. What I have criticized and what Senator Heitkamp took at way out of context was a speech that I gave that said that the federal government had not done a good enough job with the $50 billion it had over a decade in getting rural broadband to America. So she took what I said completely out of context. I'm a Thank huge you, supporter of rural broadband, and my supporters prove it. Thank Ma you. Madam Senator, Chair, the IG report, the whole point was to scuttle a bipartisan deal on Lifeline. So 